Okay, we'll start with this. Last night on Pro Box, we saw unbeaten up and comer Rihanna Rios take on seasoned veteran and former EBU champion Mary Romero of Spain. And the fight worked out as I predicted, as I expected. Yes. Rihanna Rios won a points decision, but she had to work to do it. Got off to a rocky start. Mary Romero yes. is best described as a pressure fighter, mid-range to inside fighter. Very messy, very scrappy. Most of the time, that's what she is. And it was very awkward for Rihanna Rios at first, having somebody come right at her like that. Crowding her, pushing her around, getting off punches. Mary is a step up from anyone that Rihanna Rios has faced so far. But eventually Rihanna Rios settled in, created space, showed the cleaner, tidier work. By moving. And giving herself room to work, room to get off and get out punches. As Mary Romero slowed down. Deducted a point in the fifth round for what were too many rough house tactics, which if you've seen Mary Romero in action before, you'll know she's good for that. She's rough. But the fight was getting away from her as the fight progressed, scheduled for eight rounds towards the tail end of it. Rihanna Rios finally settled in, found room to land punches, showed the cleaner, tidier work, and won a points decision and a version of the WBA title, which brings her a step closer to challenging for the full title, the one that Shernika Johnson currently has. Good acid test for Rihanna Rios. She struggled a bit, but most fighters do with Mary Romero, who's very, very awkward and very, very physical rough and tumble i can only really think of two fighters that had it all their way with mary romero in recent memory one was ellie scotney and the other was dina thorsland more recently who stopped mary romero just those two most everybody else struggles amy timlin serene satine last night rihanna rios she struggled at least at the start so now rihanna has advanced to a professional record of 8-0 with one ko and what was her first fight this year there's still plenty of time remaining within the year for her to return to action fight somebody else maybe they bring her back on pro box was an entertaining fight while it lasted young rihanna rios is well on her way to eventually challenging for the wba title in the last set of updated rank standings she was ranked at number three three, three but it's three. still gonna be a while before she officially gets her crack at the apple her title shot for what is the full WBA title at this weight. Perhaps it's a blessing in disguise that she's not there yet because young Rihanna hasn't fought in a 10-rounder yet. The most she's ever fought for was eight rounds, and that was yesterday. That was the first time up until this point she's been fighting in four-rounders and six-rounders. Yesterday was the first time that Rihanna fought in an eight-rounder, and it was good because she grew into the fight over time she didn't gas she didn't get tired it's good shernika johnson this division's wba champion is gonna be busy for at least the next two fights for the foreseeable future first she's got to fight former champion jamie mitchell then if she wins she's got to fight nina hughes again right she's gonna be busy so while shernika's busy doing all of that rihanna can continue to amass professional experience and fight maybe one or two maybe even three 10 rounders to really get herself ready get sharp because she's good but she does need experience sounds in the bank she's got to stay fighting got to stay winning even if she does it could be upwards of a year before rihanna actually gets her crack at the apple and in that time we could see fights like rihanna rios versus juliana acevedo rihanna rios versus mayeli flores or amanda gaye rehowling the other fighters in the wba's rank standings it's conceivable that in the coming year rihanna could end up facing one or some of them en route to a mandatory position for the wba title for now Congratulations to young Rihanna. The prediction stuck. I knew that she could adjust and win a points decision, and that's what she did. In men's lightweight news, Shakur Stevenson has branded Gervonta Davis a quote-unquote casual after he suggested Shakur would run in their fight. 
Tank is a casual, we've got to be honest. You can be a special boxer, but not really have the boxing knowledge. He fought Roly Romero and Isaac Cruz. When they fought each other, he picked Roly to win because of power. That's a casual opinion. Gervonta Davis is a good fighter, but he's a casual. He's going to say what casuals say. I got to agree with that. If Javante Davis picked Roley to win that fight on the premise that he hits a little bit harder than Isaac, I mean, that shows that you don't really have a boxing brain. I picked Isaac Cruz to beat Roley Romero and stop him because maybe Roley is a little bigger and maybe he does hit a little harder, but defensively he's very poor. And the prediction stuff. Though I can hardly be thought of as Nostradamus for making that prediction when I think that most people, most boxing fans, were expecting Isaac to beat Roley, except for Gervonta. Because he's a casual. Strange, I know, that a boxer, in spite of being a boxer, may not have a boxing brain. Yet another example of this is Artur Betterbeef, who recently stated, He's not a fan of boxing. It's his job, but he's not a fan of it. He doesn't watch it. And before he signed on to fight Callum Smith, he had never actually heard of him before. Even though Callum has been a champion at 168. He didn't know him. Just because the boxer boxes doesn't mean they keep up with everything. It doesn't even mean that they have a boxing brain. A mind for analysis and analytics. Javante doesn't. Not if you thought Roley was going to beat Isaac. You're a casual. And you're ducking Shakur Stevenson. In so many words what you're saying is that because Shakur is going to employ lateral movement use the ring and move around what you two shouldn't fight huh? because he's not going to stand in one spot and he's not going to make himself available to you or your power he's not going to make himself easy to hit on that premise you two shouldn't fight so what if Manny said that to Floyd what if they never fought the fight never actually happened and the explanation was well Manny thinks Floyd is going to run what if so they ain't going to fight if Manny kept the energy for Floyd that Gervonta keeps for Shakur, that Shakur's gonna run, Shakur's gonna move around. What would people say? Would you guys be all right with that? The way you're all right with this? The way you're all right with Gervonta Davis swerving Shakur Stevenson? It's a rhetorical question because you're not gonna get an honest answer from Gervonta Davis's fans. These are not honest people. These are low quality humans. <laughs> it's not what they say it is. I'll tell you that. It took Gervonta Davis eight rounds to find Frank Martin and finally land a meaningful punch to get him out of there. That took eight rounds. Frank is not on the level of Shakur Stevenson and there is no evidence to suggest that he is. Shakur has been a champion at three weights. Frank has been a champion in none. Shakur has an Olympic pedigree. Frank has never been one. He's not an Olympian. He's literally a late starter in the sport. Going into the Davis fight, you know what he was. What? A 30-year-old prospect. He's not the same kind of physical specimen that Shakur Stevenson is with the same engine and the same fitness. So when you survey the fight and realize that movement is what frustrated Gervonta Davis and movement, just movement from Frank Martin is what kept Frank in the fight for eight rounds until he slowed down a bit and got tired, that it was the movement that was working for him. Shakur moves a lot better than Frank Martin with a better engine than Frank Martin. He'll be a lot harder to find then Frank Martin. Then it becomes clear. You? You. Calvin Ford, Kenny Ellis, no. You can't deal with this guy's movement, and he's a little taller and a little longer, so he can box you from the outside comfortably. He can make you look bad, and you know it. Your fans know it. They would rather watch you fight a 36 going on 37 years old Vasil Lomachenko who you've been avoiding for years or they would rather watch you have a rerun with Isaac Cruz before you ever set foot in the ring with Shakur Stevenson because they're starting to realize they know the movement from Shakur wait so they're not casuals being honest with you they're bigger cowards than they are casuals I mean the ones that aren't casuals the one that understand this a little better understand that stylistically Shakur is all wrong for Javante they're just cowards some understand it some don't the ones that don't they're casuals the ones that do they're cowards what they have in common none of them want to see javante fight shakur stevenson
elsewhere in the world of boxing, Ryan Garcia made his latest addition to the lore, the backstory as to why it is he tested positive for Osterin. The story's changed again. Now he's saying, so Scooter, the one that gave me the supplements that were tainted, was the guy who is the strength and conditioning coach for Zab Judah. And he knew he was helping me lose weight the last day. And that's how they all of a sudden knew that I was gonna test positive. So sick and sad. So wait, now he's blaming Scooter and Zab Judah. He did yesterday because Scooter used to work with Zab and Zab is Devin Haney's godfather or godmother, whatever it is. Huh? Ryan continued, Judah sounds really similar to Judas, the one who betrayed Jesus. And it makes sense that he set me up probably for some money. Oh, is he still pretending to be a Jesus freak? He's still pretending to be a Bible thumper, behaving the way that he behaves online. I don't know who he thinks he's kidding. Teens and tweens. But he carried on. He continued to carry on yesterday saying, we love you, you piece of shit. Zab Judah. So he started a space on Twitter yesterday. He started a space and it's my understanding that Zab Judah tried to join that space to talk to Ryan and what Ryan told him to do was to suck his dick. Suck his what? His dick. Wow. wow you know, wow. forget pugilism, forget professional boxing. Those are fighting words. That's a, a, another level of things that Ryan took it to. Though Ryan being the cornflake that he is, he immediately took it back once him and Zab had a face-to-face -face on Instagram. Well, pause, my bad. Uh, my bad, I said pause. pause. No diddy, my bad. No doubt. I, I, I apologize for that. I can apologize for that. Yeah, because I'm like, bro, I'm, I'm like, yo, what? what? When yeah. did we start doing that? Yeah. I don't I do not do that, bro. Like, yeah. you know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. we yeah. men, we're fighters. Yeah. We're yeah. top pugilists of the world. Yeah. Yeah. I yeah. have my era. You have your era. We all doing yeah. our thing. You know my what I'm saying? Hey. Hey. I respect all y'all young bad. fighters, everybody doing their thing. You and Devin had your differences. You had a test that came up. The test came back positive. Devin Haney is my godson. I so know that. when you look at, wait, wait, wait. So when you say, oh, I'm taking a side that's my family, bro. That's my real blood family. I know, that. I know that. So when you see Devin Haney, when he was a young kid carrying that belt yes, in the ring, yes. that's my undisputed titles he was carrying in the ring. Fact. So that's real family. You know what I'm saying? And I respect so, that. Right. So so when you say I'm taking a side, I'm so I'm supposed to. If you're if your brother fought, I'm pretty sure you're gonna be right there with your brother, right? No, not if he's lying, bro. I'm sorry. Uh Kane killed Abel. Remember, he was his brother too. Well, I don't know what y'all feel. I got ten brothers, and I'm 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 right there with them every time they go to anything. I ain't gonna lie, bro. I'm with. I, I love God more than I love. I don't care about. Blood, I love bro. blood. Ain't nothing. Listen, we all love no, God. No. I, anybody oh, but, but, that tell you, but, I tell you, I love God. Yeah, but, anybody but, but, tell you that. But, but blood to me. I'm looking at Ryan's expressions the whole time that Zab is confronting him about what he said. It's like dealing with a child. But the thing is that Ryan is not a child. He's in his mid-twenties. So that as soon as Zab confronts him about what he said live in front of everybody, he goes back on what he said. He crumbles. He doesn't stand on it. Because if what you are saying is Zab and Scooter in connection with the Haney's, these are the people that set you up, or these are the people that you think set you up. Stand on business. What are you saying my bad for? You're saying they set you up. How is it your bad? Are you apologizing? Ryan Garcia is blase demeanor towards <laughs> anything, everything has everything to do with his social media following and nothing to do with his accolades, his accomplishments as a boxer in the sport of boxing. Like I've said in previous videos, he behaves like uh, an IG model. Or an OnlyFans girl. He's not a man. He doesn't bear none of the qualities, none of the properties of a man. He's a soy boy. Because look at how fast he went back on what he just said as soon as he was confronted about it. What are you apologizing for? You think Zab is part of the people that set you up, don't ya? Don't ya? And look at how fast he folded. Look. It all all stems from what can only be described as Ryan's own perceived pretty privilege because he behaves like a girl that's got pretty privilege, an IG model, an OnlyFans girl. He's not that far removed from the kind of vapid airheads you find on, say, the Whatever podcast. It's basically adults trying to have adult conversations about adult themes with those who don't have the mental faculties of an adult. The accountability. Or the frame of mind. Ryan has the frame of mind of a teenager, even though he's in his mid-twenties, and that's who he appeals to. It's no coincidence that his biggest audience are teens, and tweens. Primarily comprised of youngsters. That's what has enabled him to be blasé throughout. 
throughout all of this. He feels invincible because his core audience is going to go with whatever he says and whatever he does since his behavior mirrors their own. Behavior that is infantile, immature, erratic, sporadic, scatterbrained. What Ryan looked like yesterday apologizing to Zab Judah was like those bozos that like to play pranks in public until they find the right one. Right? That'll smack the shit out of you, your friends, your cameraman, and everybody involved because Ryan is not a street person. Understand that. He doesn't come from that kind of lifestyle in any capacity or facet. Very most, Ryan is most like a kid who's on a high school football team. You're popular, you play a sport. But outside of that world that you live in, you're nothing. You're a mark. A target. Just to feel comfortable enough to walk around. You've got to wrap yourself in a protective cocoon, a protective layer of security guards while you're mouthing off to everybody. Aren't you supposed to be a fighter of some kind? Now what they'll say is that, well, he's a well-known guy, public figure. He's a celebrity and thus is commonplace among celebrities. Yeah, celebrities. Emphasis on celebrities. He's supposed to be a fighter. Ryan Garcia has revealed that he is now split from his longtime lawyer and advisor, Lupe Valencia. I fired Lupe. Lupe's gone, like two days ago. He's Al Heyman's puppet. I know Al Heyman said, I don't have to sign Ryan. I've got Lupe controlling Ryan. No, you don't. I'm not scared of Al Heyman. I don't give a fuck. Oh, you just now realize that Lupe is operating in Heyman's best interests and not yours? I mean, if this is actually true and he actually fired Lupe Valencia, it's about time. It took you dumbass long enough to realize maybe Lupe is operating in someone else's best interests instead of yours because look at what he had you agreed to a catch weight and a rehydration clause for Javante Davis none of which favored you it favored Javante but Ryan was so goddamn stupid he didn't realize that Javante needs that fight more than you do you did because you're younger than he is and without you he ain't coming nowhere near no million pay-per-view buys not without you you let them use you because you're stupid and i can almost hear it now what the response from that will be from Ryan's supporters that he did make a lot of money. You know, he could have made even more if he would have waited. If what was your own lawyer, your own advisor, didn't serve your head up on a platter for what was Al Heyman's boy, Al Heyman's fighter. So like, are you stupid or something? Ryan Garcia's money and momentary success is not evidence to the contrary. Even stupid people under the right circumstances can make a bit of dough. You're still stupid. It took you this long to realize that maybe Lupe has Al Heyman's best interests in mind more than yours. So what was the straw that broke the camel's back? The settlement agreement that you reached with the New York State Athletic Commission? That for all of the hooping and hollering and finger pointing that Ryan is doing online publicly, behind closed doors, Lupe Valencia folded. Why do you think you got a longer suspension than Julio Martinez, who popped hot not once, but twice? Why do you think your suspension is longer than his? Because Lupe folded. And you've been paying this guy. You're stupid. You You've been paying this guy for how many years now? Moron. Enjoy him while he lasts, because all I see in Ryan Garcia is just another burnout. He's a star. Well, that's what stars generally do. They burn out. They all burn out eventually.